My name is Greg Eva, and today I'm going to be taking you through the new ThingWorks and Azure Industrial IoT integration announced in ThingWorks 9.0. So I'm dividing this into a three-part series in order to stay focused and simple on this first part, giving you a brief history and overview of the integration, as well as showing you a demo of how it's going to work and then using the second part to really go over the overall architecture a little bit more in detail, having a look at some of the components and how it comes together. And then the third part, finally, just to have a little bit of fun and connect up some other OPC UA servers. So first of all, we've obviously been able to connect um, Kepware to ThingWorks via Azure IoT Hub for quite some time. And we've done this using MQTT. Um, and this MQTT payload is coming from the Azure IoT gateway using the standard and customizable message structure from, from the IoT gateway. However, this has brought some um, disadvantages with such an approach. It's obviously very quick and easy to set up and very Azure IoT friendly, um, but it's lacking some things like being able to have um, buffering at the edge of those messages in case of any disconnection with the cloud. So we started looking at how we can do that. And with the Azure IoT Edge, we did add the capability of being able to add some buffering in there, but we still essentially had this custom MQTT message that needed to be parsed out every time in ThingWorks. So with this new integration using OPC UA data model, uh, we're leveraging essentially the industry standard OPC UA and that standard core data model so that we can use that across a Kepware server, across the Azure IoT components, as well as in ThingWorks. So that's really a biggest part of why this is so interesting from my perspective is because we're starting to use these standards and we can leverage them across um, different components that are adhering to the OPC UA standard. And we'll see that in the third one too, when we look at connecting some non-PTC OPC UA servers. Okay, so let's jump in and, and have a demo of how this works when we want to connect a new OPC UA server in ThingWorks. Okay, so here I am on my Windows machine that's running Kepware. And you can see I've got just the basic configuration with the simulator. Uh, configuration example that's set up and that we can see here are some of the simulated data uh, for the ramp values and the sign values and I'm going to use the ramp and the sign values mostly as well as one of these 8-bit B register uh, devices. So now I do have this connected to my IoT Edge which is on the same network running in a, a Linux Ubuntu machine and I'm going to come back over here we'll just have a look at this real quickly in my IoT hub, you can see that I have this OPC UA EVA IoT Edge. And this um, this Linux Ubuntu um, machine is, is just provisioned to the server, and it's got this layered deployment that's deploying these three modules, Publisher, Twin, and Discovery, that are used as the edge side of this OPC UA uh, capabilities from Azure. So we can see that it's connected. Um, everything is good here. So let's come over to ThingWorks. And now in ThingWorks, I have my Azure IoT Hub device that's connected, uh, giving us communications with the IoT Hub. I've also got, um, you know, it's connected, it's reporting here, and the configuration over here has already been set up to enable the OPC UA, uh, which is the new part in, uh, in this version four of the Azure IoT Hub connector. And I'm gonna come over to this mashup. Um, I'm gonna turn this auto refresh on here. And you can see that we're essentially going to use this Azure IoT Hub OPC UA uh, entity, and we're going to um, send some, some REST API calls to the Azure Industrial IoT application that's running on Azure um, to essentially do a discovery of this particular uh, Windows machine that we just set up there. Let's add that application. And so that's going to go back to the cloud application, which is going to be sent down to the edge and is going to do a discovery of that particular Kepware uh, endpoint, and it should give us a uh, provisioned and configured application on here that we'll then be able to add uh, an endpoint for communication with in uh, ThingWorks. 
Okay, so there is the application ID and you can see the UAS. This is the application ID that's created in the Azure Industrial IoT application. And if we come over to endpoint configuration here, there's also this UAT, which is the, uh, the endpoint of the Kepware server. Now in ThingWorks, these are one-to-one. -one. So we've got this, um, uh, this OPC server here and it's deactivated and disconnected. And to set the security mode is sign and encrypt. So we did have that um, uh, get this from the communication. So we need to activate this endpoint. And I've just done that by clicking activate. This can take a few minutes uh, while it goes back and, and establishes everything, um, those handshaking and things like this and gets that overall connection set up. Um, this is probably a good opportunity to mention one of the things is that because we're using sign and encrypt for the uh, communication between the IoT Edge and the Kepware server. Okay, so here we're getting that it's activated now, but it's still disconnected. Um, this is where this is where the IoT Edge is going to be passing the TLS certificate over to Kepware to try to connect. So if you're having any difficulties in connecting at this point, then you should definitely go back to your Kepware and verify that, that um, if there's a new certificate that's arrived that you have appropriately trusted that certificate. Okay, so it's already connected, um, ready to go. So I can leave here. And from now, um, this is really the easy part in ThingWorks. We just come over to Industrial Connections and you'll see that um, I have this UAT 96466BAE here. And this is the endpoint device that um, needs to be saved uh, into the database and ThingWorks configuration. And I'm gonna put over here in the description OPC UA TKS, just so that I know that this is my, I'll even put the port number in here. This is my ThingWorks Kepware server on 49320. Um, I know where that is, so that's okay. And let's save that. Okay, so now this has just become my industrial gateway. And you can see that this is based on the base thing template industrial gateway. And so from here, um, I can go over to the Discover tab and I can browse the industrial gateway similarly to how I would do a, a Kepware browse in ThingWorks if it was using an always on connection. And then here I can just do a browse of the this SIM group um, and we'll look for those tags. And effectively, let's grab a couple of them. I'm gonna take ramp one, you know what? Let's take a random one, ramp one, and sign one and user one. So we'll take those four tags, we'll bind to new entity. And here we want to take a remote thing. Okay. And it's created a new remote thing for us, which will give it a name. And at this point, uh, you'll notice that there's four things to do. These four things are based on those bindings that I created. Uh, and we need to change the names of these properties because these aren't valid property names in, in um, ThingWorks. They're too long and they're actually using the entire namespace with some illegal characters. Um, so I'm just gonna change that to ramp one. And um, for fun, I'm gonna change the scan rate to 500 milliseconds as well on each of them as I do this. By default, you saw that it was set to um, one second. And that scan rate is actually going to be uh, sent back to the Azure Industrial IoT application. Um, when these subscriptions are set up, so that's one of the very interesting things about this is we are in the ThingWorks application and it's gonna be sending those down to the IoT Edge publisher. And I click save here um, so that those subscriptions are actually gonna be updated accordingly based on that, that scan rate that I've just set. Um, okay, I was just gonna say it doesn't see that it's online yet, but now it does. And um, if all things go well, I should have some data in a minute or so, and look at that, I do. Okay, so there I have my um, 
data points that are coming in. You can see that as I hit the refresh. And um, amazing stuff. There is one, uh, one or two more things I want to show you. If we come over to the uh, VS Code, um, VS Code IDE, they have um, an Azure IoT Hub extension, Azure IoT package extension. And from this, what's quite interesting is that we can use the endpoint monitoring feature that's in this. And, and here you can see if I start monitoring the built-in event endpoint, basically I should be able to see all those OPC UA messages coming in on, um, on the IoT Hub that I've just set up those subscriptions for. And what do you know I do? Um, I see the node ID, so this is the name in the namespace that we that we saw there. The server, endpoint URL, um, the tag name, timestamps. So we get the VTQ information in here, and basically, you know, I can use this, and this is a very helpful tool to be able to to troubleshoot and monitor the um, uh, telemetry data that's coming into ThingWorks. And just as a final um, sort of fun thing, I'm going to add another property here, add. Um, and we're going to say control. We'll call this one control. And then set it as a Boolean. I guess I don't really need to. And we'll do remotely bound and do a tag address here. And I'm going to come down into this data type examples section here, uh, 8 bit device. B registers and in the B registers, there's a number of Boolean values here. So I'm just going to grab this first Boolean value, and um, you know what? I'm going to change the scan rate to be very fast, 250 milliseconds. And then I'm also going to say push type. So it's push based on value change by default, but the push threshold is set to zero. So that means at any change, it'll send. Um, and here I'm going to set that to um, to a change threshold of one. So it has to change either from zero to one or one to zero for it to actually trigger the send. Um, so we'll say okay to that and save. And so that now has made that, uh, that subscription request to the Azure Industrial IoT application. It's added this parameter all the way down to the edge and it should be watching that, uh, that parameter uh, in Kepware. So, Let's come back here and uh, just come over to our Kepware server and we'll go to this 8-bit um, B registered section. So here you can see there's that uh, that first Boolean value here that's set to one. And just as a kind of a quick um, demonstration, let me reorganize my desktops a little bit so that we can see that faster. Um, I'm just gonna set this value here in ThingWorks, set it to true and then try and quickly flip back over here. And there we see that it changed in Kepware um, pretty quickly. I don't know how long that was, but uh, it was not, it was probably between a half a second and a second. So if I um, write that back up to zero, once again, this isn't pushing up on all changes. It's only pushing up when it changes on the IoT edge. And now if I do a refresh, we should see that go back to False. So there you go. That's a quick overview of um, of the new industrial gateway and industrial connections functionality in ThingWorks that leverages uh, Azure IoT uh, and Azure Industrial IoT.